This exercise is from multivariable linear regression with categorical variable. So let me explain what is a categorical variable. Column A consists of the housing prices. This is the dependent variable that we like to predict. Column B and column C are the independent variable. So that means those are the information that we have. So column B is the square feet. So the size of the house. While column C is the location. So there are three possible locations. The first one is Masonville. The second is downtown. And the third one is campus. Column C is called a categorical variable. The reason is that there is no number associated with Masonville or downtown or campus. Another example of categorical variable would be the day of the week. So let's say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You cannot assign a number one to Monday, two to Tuesday, three to Wednesday, because what happened in Wednesday doesn't mean it tripled the value of what happen, whatever happened in Monday. It is just happened that those are different days of the week. So then what we need to do is actually to translate that to a number format. So the next thing that next thing that we need to do is to translate the location to something we call the dummy variable. So I am going to translate column C onto column D and column E. So basically, if column C turns out to be downtown, then I want to put a one here. If column C turns out to be Mason View, I want to put a one here. And if column C is campus, I like to leave both to be zero. So let me give you an example. So on row number two, so the location is Mason View. So therefore I put a zero underneath downtown and one underneath Mason View. And at the next one, the location is downtown. So therefore I put a one underneath D3 and zero underneath E3. Well, if that is campus, that means it's none of the above, then I put a zero and zero onto both. So you may find that we do not have a case that, concern, uh, that correspond to one and one, because that is not possible to have a location that is both in downtown and also Masonville. So the rule of thumb is that if you have three category, you use two variable. Three category that you use two variable. So let's say if you like to consider all seven days of the week, so there are seven different category, then at the time you need six different dummy variables. So you may also ask, how did I come up with downtown and Masonville, not downtown and campus? Actually, it doesn't matter. The exercise will turn out to have exactly the same answer if you choose the two dummy variable to be downtown and campus instead. So at that point, Masonville would be the zero and zero. So all results would be the same. So step number one, I need to change it 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, so on. So there is a faster way to do it. Equals to if C2 equals to D2, a D1, then you give it a 1, otherwise give it a 0. So the comment is uh, the command is called equals to if c2 equals to d1 comma 1 comma 0. So then that means if c2 turns out to be the same as downtown, then you give a 1. 
So in order to move this formula to the right and to the down, then what you need to do is to put some dollar sign. You put a dollar sign in front of C. The reason is that you like to drag the formula from column D to column E while keeping C as C. You put a dollar sign in front of one. The reason is that you like to drag this formula from D2 all the way to D10 while keeping the reference as D1. So you put this, copy this formula to the right hand side, and then you click on the little green dot here, double click, and automatically it generates the value for you. So let me give you an example. So let's say Mason view here. So you have zero for downtown and one as Mason view. Campus, then you have zero and zero. Well, if that is downtown, then you have one and zero. Step number two, you need to get ready for running a linear regression. So right now our data are in column B and also in column D and E. So those are the independent variable. Well, unfortunately, when you click on the Excel regression, the independent variable needs to be in a consecutive rectangle. Right now, it gets separated by column C, so it doesn't work quite well. So an easy way for you to do it is basically move column B to column F, okay? Move column B to column F. So one easy way to do it is I simply go to F1, make it to be equals to B1. F1 equals to B1, and then I double click. So basically I copy column B to column F. So right now this is in a consecutive rectangle. Next step, we need to run a linear regression. So you go to data, data analysis, Regression. Input Y range. That is the variable that you like to predict, which we call the dependent variable. So you click on here. The dependent variable is in column A. Input X range. That is the independent variable. The one that you have the information. So you click on D all the way to F. You click label here. The reason is that the first row is a label. And let's say the output range would be column J, J1. Let's say that is the output range. Then you click OK. So when you look at this, the first thing that you will pay attention is the p-value. And there are four different p-value. You do not care about the intercept. What you care are the slope. So right now the slope are given in N, okay? So N 18 to N 20. So remember that the slope, so slope equals to zero means no relationship. So right now we want to make sure that the value, the P value, is less than 5%. So a p-value less than 5%, that means there is a statistically significant relationship. 
for example, here, the value here is 30.6%. So that means there are 30.6% chance that it can be explained by randomness. 30.6% chance that it can be explained by randomness. So that is not good. That is not good. The next one is good. There is only 0.1% chance it can be explained by randomness. The last one you notice there is a E minus 12. That is a scientific notation. That means 10 to the power minus 12. That means you have 0 0.00000. So you have like a 12 zero, including the one before the dot. So that means it's an extremely small number. So the three value here indicate that the first one is not good because there is a 30.6% chance that it can be explained by randomness. So therefore, what you need to do is to remove this variable from your linear regression, remove this variable. So the way to do it is that you run the linear regression one more time. Data analysis, run it one more time. The, independ the dependent variable is still column A. However, the input X range. Now you do not include column D, you do not. You only include column E and column F. And let's say you like to output the range to J23, okay? So these are the value. So then the first thing that you pay attention would be what is the p-value? So right now we only have two independent variables. So therefore there would only have two slope, which I highlight at this two point. So the first one and the second one are very, very small. So that means there is a chance of 0 0.0008 that the independent variable Mason view is happened by random. So which means it passed the 95% test, which is good. The next one, so it's 10 to the power minus 13. That means 0 0.0000130, 13. Probability that it can be explained by randomness. So once again, it is ridiculously small, which means that is good. So therefore, we conclude that this is a good linear regression model to capture the relationship between the housing price, which is the y-axis, and also the Mason view categorical variable and square feet, which are the two independent variables. For multi-linear regression equation, you will look at the adjusted R square, adjusted R square, which I highlight in K28. So the value is 0 0.9999. So that means pretty much you have captured all the information that can be used to explain the housing price. So therefore you are in a really good shape. So then in order to predict the value, you use the regression coefficient. So if we like to write down the regression coefficient, that means the value in dollar value equals to the intercept plus the dummy variable Mason view multiplied by the coefficient plus 995 multiplied by square feet. So right now, the questions is that we like to predict a house that is 2,000 square feet 
in downtown. 2,000 square feet and in downtown. So then downtown, that means the Mason view variable equals to zero and the square feet equals to 2,000. So therefore the answer is equals to Three nine eight zero zero plus the next one that corresponds to the slope of the Mason view, which is zero, plus nine nine five plus uh, multiplied by two thousand. So that means if there is a house that is described with located at campus and also two thousand square feet, we expect the house worth this two point zero three million dollars. So what are the important learning points for this exercise? So then number one, column C is called a categorical variable. There are different categories. So therefore you need to convert that to a dummy variable. So now there are three categories. So you use two dummy variable to capture that. So it doesn't really matter which two do you pick. You can pick the two to be downtown Mason View or campus Mason View or downtown campus. The result turns out to be the same. That is the learning number one. Learning number two, once you have run the linear regression, you have to check the p-value of the slope. If the p-value is greater than 5%, then you remove that particular variable and run it again. So at that point, the downtime variable have the p-value which is greater than 5%. That is not good. So then you have to run the linear regression again. And then the last step, so you run it again and then both p-value are smaller than 5%. So therefore you are in a good shape and you can use this linear regression formula to predict the housing price. That concludes the presentation today.